No Rest for the Wicked just got a major Crucible update. For those of you that don't know, No Rest for the Wicked is Moon Studios new game that entered early access back in April of 2024. These are the developers behind the critically acclaimed Ori series, so that speaks for itself on how talented these devs are. No Rest for the Wicked is much different than Ori though. It's described as a visceral precision action RPG set to reinvent the genre. Combat in this distinctive action RPG stands out just as much as its art style. I could seriously go on and on about the art style of this game. It's incredible and for the sake of this video, I will just leave it at that. Unlike the rapid ability driven skirmishes of Diablo or Path of Exile where you unleash a barrage of powers to defeat hordes of enemies in seconds, this game offers deliberate and deadly swordplay against smaller groups of foes. Instead of being a battlefield god, you play as a fragile adventurer who must master dodge rolls, perfect parries, and occasional combat abilities to survive. This makes battles more challenging and demands your full attention. There's no need to race back to recover lost loot, but the difficulty is still present for those who enjoy a tough experience. This fresh approach to the genre creates a journey that starts off more challenging than most, where each victory feels like it was hard won. For someone who has already explored most of Diablo 4's dungeons, No Rest for the Wicked offers a much more engaging experience than mindlessly plowing through armies. That's not to say there isn't a place for that. B4 is still a game I continuously go back to when I want to relax and just game. Basically, No Rest for the Wicked is an ARPG with Souls-like combat, or at least was a Souls-like ARPG. After this Crucible update, I would probably classify this game as a Souls-like roguelite ARPG. So what's in this Crucible update? Well, the patch notes for this update contain almost 4,000 words, so I won't be breaking that down in this video. The TLDR though, is this update fixed a heap of performance issues, bugs, and a whole lot more. I'll leave a link to the patch notes in the description below for any of you interested. What we will dig into is the new content additions, specifically the major Crucible rework. They added multiple new base Crucible chambers. Each trial run now randomizes more than triple as many arenas, and includes more diverse art styles, new enemies, and more environmental challenges. The way the Crucible used to work is you would traverse through the same seven or so floors, eliminating baddies along the way until reaching the boss on the final floor. The floors were randomized on which order you needed to complete them in, but they were the same seven floors over and over and over again. This certainly got repetitive, and after a couple runs, I put the game down and decided I would just wait for new content. So now, They've tripled the amount of arenas. They added a new enemy faction, the Gloam, which are a brand new group of enemies that can be found inside the Crucible. And in later updates, they will also appear in the overworld as well. The Gloam are lost souls who became infected by the pestilence within the deep dank caves throughout Sakra. Some got lost, trapped underground, or buried alive. But all of them ended up glowing with a kind of corrupt bioluminescence, similar to the algae and fungi that bloom within those same caves. On top of a new enemy type, they also implemented a new system, Echoes, to allow infinite customization for every Crucible run. This is the roguelite feature. Echoes allow you to customize every run with a huge variety of buffs and effects, creating a staggering amount of possibilities as it allows you to create a build on top of your build. Thanks to Echoes and the randomization of them, no two runs in the Crucible will ever be alike. You can also select Echoes that apply a debuff to the enemies within the Crucible. All enemies inside the Crucible now drop glowing orbs called Traces, which can be used to activate Echoes at any time. The more enemies you kill, the more you can bolster your run with unique effects and conditions. Basically, you kill an enemy, they drop this trace, these Traces, you pick those up, and then you can use them to purchase these Echoes. My current build is a heavy strength build using this two-handed cinder and stone hammer. These echoes allowed me to modify my build drastically. I had a build where I was able to get my heavy equip load down to light and was able to be fast and dash away from attacks. And another build I was able to increase my damage and stagger damage so much that I could continuously stagger the boss without taking a hit. Now I think that that was just patched in, in the latest hotfix that came out just a couple hours ago. I haven't been able to test it, but I don't think I'll be able to continuously stagger the boss anymore. But anyways, please share your builds below. And if you jumped into the new Crucible already, share what echoes you are currently loving. This future alone makes playing the Crucible so much more fun. It completely eliminates the monotonous feeling the Crucible used to have. They also made some environmental updates to the Crucible as well, adding new spike traps, fire projectiles, levers, and more. Another huge Crucible addition is the new vendor. What we mean to it and who it once was is a mystery, but it feeds on Gloam Seed, 
which gets dropped throughout the crucible. The more we progress through the crucible, the more gloom seed we can feed to this vendor who will do things for us like sell fallen embers, refine resources, exalt our weapons, and unlock new features within the crucible in the future. You can visit the vendor on floor five of the crucible. We won't touch on everything this vendor has to offer, but we will dive into the exalted gear, which permanently increases stats and improves enchantments. By upgrading them to the status of exalted, this is a permanent change that raises stats and improves enchantments. Therefore, if you challenge yourself in the trials of the crucible, you will earn the chance to gain these rewards that can carry over into the rest of the game, making your items more powerful than ever before. There's another feature you can unlock at this crucible vendor that gives you the chance to grab some more unique echoes during your gauntlet. So essentially, you do crucible runs, which earn you this currency called Gloam Seed. You deliver them to the crucible vendor to unlock several new features. I'll read a brief passage from their crucible deep dive because I think it's important for new and current players. I will leave a link to the entire deep dive in the description below as well. In addition, the Serum Crucible now opens much sooner in your adventure. It can be entered by activating the Spoken and Unspoken quest with Elsa as soon as the player has arrived in Sacrament and completed the first campaign quest. Because of this, some of you may find that your quest progression for Spoken and Unspoken has reset with this update. Never fear, this is intentional. We want everyone to be able to experience the new flow of the Crucible organically, including important tutorials, and the easiest way to do this was to start the quest over from the beginning. But don't worry, your gear, character, and other quest progression should all remain unchanged. <laughs> kind of funny they said should here. All my stuffs remained unchanged. Hopefully all your guys did as well. But continuing on with the quote, even with all of this new content, we're still not finished with the Serum Crucible. In subsequent updates, we plan to make new statues available to unlock in the atrium which will lead to more unique challenges and even some brand new bosses. We're actively working on this additional content even as we release this first Crucible update. So really, the only bummer to this update is that we can still only access the first statue, meaning we will be fighting the same boss we've already been fighting in the Crucible. I look forward to the other statues opening up and getting some more variety in the Crucible when it comes to the bosses, so good to know that they are aware of that and working on it. Now, this update may come to surprise many of you, the first major update for the game was supposed to be multiplayer. According to their roadmap, PvP was supposed to be update 1. That's not to say I'm disappointed in the Crucible update, and if I'm being honest, I'm glad we got the Crucible update over PvP. Now, I love PvP, but for a game like No Rest for the Wicked, I could go without it. I got this game for the single player, Souls-like RPG experience. If I want PvP, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> I'll just go play a game that puts PvP first, like Overwatch or League of Legends. I do look forward to when this game has PvP, as it will be fun to jump in and mess around, but I won't ever take PvP in games like these that serious. Possibly an unpopular opinion, you guys let me know in the comments below. When asked if the PvP was pushed, the co-founder replied, not pushed, we will just have a few additional updates to react to what we've seen since launch before we do that one. So PvP is still most certainly in the works, and has yet to be scrapped. This tweet here also alludes to the idea of doing these Crucibles co-op with a buddy. So that'll be fun if they implement that. A few other notable updates I wanted to mention are the new dismemberment system. For this update, which is very satisfying. The combat has been enhanced with punchier kill effects, enemies explode from fireballs, shatter from an attack after being frozen in ice, and smash to pieces with heavy weapons. Like I said earlier, I'm a two-handed hammer type of guy. So seeing the foes get absolutely smushed is always fun. They've also extended some regions of the overworld like the Black Trench and the Nameless Pass. So there's even more secrets and surprises for us to seek out and explore in those areas. And you can finally pet the cute stray animals around the town, which is nice. After a brutal crucible run, going back to town to relax and pet an animal will certainly relieve some of that stress. To close the updates out, the team says, as always, our team is hard at work on awesome new content and features. We're eager to share more details on our early access roadmap soon, so stay tuned for that. We can't wait to hear back from you. We are always listening and working meticulously on shaping Wicked to be the best it can be, Moon Studios. So far, I think the game has achieved what it set out to do. They wanted to reinvent the ARPG genre, and I think they did that back in April, when the game entered early access. This new Crucible update certainly propelled them even further in achieving that goal. It's a whole new Crucible. Forget about the old one. I am excited to delve deeper into this update, and I look forward to what the Moon Studios dev team cook up for the future of this game. I tend to stay away from early access titles, but this one checked 
all the boxes for me. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you're playing this game and the new update, or if you haven't played this game yet, are you thinking about picking it up now, or are you just going to wait for 1.0? I know it was certainly worth my 30 bucks. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoy this type of content, and as always, take excellent care of yourselves, and goodbye.